Hey guys, welcome back to Rogue's Guild. Uh, this is Will Luger with my uh, blue, black, green, or I would say two color uh, guild list that I took to North Carolina. Uh, I call this a two, a two color deck because even though there are technically, in all technicality, three colors on the deck, uh, you're using absolute awareness to get one of your off color stones, and then it's like, okay, cool, now I just gotta get another off color stone. So, I, w I would call it more of a two color deck. Um, you could, you could call it three colors if you want, but that's what I'm going to call it through most of this. So, um, why did I take Gil to North Carolina? Well, I feel that uh, Gil is a very, very solid deck. It has, but the problem with Gil is that there is a very high skill cap for this deck. You have to know the ins and outs of your deck, know the play lines for, for the meta, and be able to come up with options on the fly if you, those planes do not work out right. Um, Gil is not a deck I would recommend to a lot of people. You have to, it is, in my opinion, the hardest deck in the game to play. Um, but if you do know how to play it, it could be, it could be a very rewarding deck. It's a lot of like high, high risk, high reward type factor. So, getting onto my list, uh, I'm playing the, tr start off with the traditional Gil things. As on the four ofs, you have Absolute Awareness, Lorite, Leaf Paladin, Gentle Breeze, and White Leaf. Uh, with the three ofs, I went with Arrival of the Hero, Fifth Element, and Vanish. Then the two of slot, two of slots, I put the uh, Fairy Spell, Winds of Vitality, Ruin Story, and Baby Gill. And then one ofs, we have the one of each other leaf, Blue Leaf, Black Leaf, Red Leaf, Winds of Salvation, Spinning Aquasil, and one and only. Um, it, in the stone deck, you obvious, uh, obviously I have uh, 14 wind stones, 4 speaking stones, a black stone, and a blue stone. And then I have my sideboard that I took. I'm not going to go into sideboard because as in every event, even though the meta is about the same, we keep seeing different decks pop up, and that'll make your sideboard different for every event. So you can look at my sideboard, you can look at Aaron's sideboard he took for the black one, and I can almost bet that neither of our sideboards are going to be the exact, would be the exact same for an event like if we took this to a different event. Alright guys, so going into this, I'm going to start talking about how the, uh, I feel the blue blacklist that I have, a, a list like this is better than the straight black. While there is more of a risk because you're running another color, uh, in blue you get to run Spinning Aquasil and One and Only. And you also get to play your blue leaf. So, we're going to talk about Blue Leaf first. So, being able to play your Blue Leaf in this meta is super, super good. Because in the Burnhold matchup, you get to balance their one and two, one or two drops. Which, their two drops, like if they're playing the aggro list and they're playing March Hare, being able to bounce a March Hare on their turn is really nice. It's, it can swing the tempo in your favor very, very fast. Um, spinning, going on to Spinning Aquasil... A lot of your deck, as you can see here in this list, a lot of it's chance. So, even like bringing back an absolute to get another stone is super, super good. Like, my thing was I found most of the time I would spinning Aquasil back in the rival. Because against Kyrick, that gets you your fourth arrival, which you don't need all the time. But sometimes you do actually need that fourth arrival. Um, or you can bring back uh, fifth element and use it with Gil's effect for the spirit magics. There's just a lot, a lot, a lot of targets for spinning Aquasil, uh, which playing the blue version really is almost only the other, the almost only way to play spinning Aquasil. The only other way is to do baby Gil, but you have to have baby Gil to be able to do it, which is kind of a problem because some games you just don't see it. Um, then the other tech I did for playing with the blue version is one and only. That card is a super sleeper right now. Uh, Vegan played it at Vegas, and I was really impressed with it. I think one and only could be popping, see, could see being popping up more and more here soon. Uh, that card it's good in the Hanzo match, Brynhold match, Machines match, and the um, Mirror match. So. Let's talk about the Brunhold matchup. In almost every Brunhold list, people are playing four ofs of this. They're playing so many four ofs that you're going to be able to one and only and hit all those resonators, and it acts like a pseudo board wipe. And with spinning Aquasil, you can put out an early one and only, like on turn, like turn four or whatever, 
after you finally untap with the blue stone, you can just go one and only, and your opponent's going to go, oh, cool, now I can, uh, now I can go wide, because I've already ha he's already used his one and only. Well, spinning aqua so people don't think about that card, but it's a really, really nice card to be, to punish your opponent for going wide again. Because you just go, spinning aqua so bring back one and only, go to my turn, recover one and only, and now their entire board's cleared again. Um... So that's those are really the main reasons to play blue. And I feel like it's super good because like also in the Hanzo matchup, when your opponent goes uh, play two Jizos or three Jizos, uh, you what, while black tiers can get around that, one and only is one world cheaper. So I think that that is super super nice. I like being will efficient, so that lets me be will efficient without really even trying. And also in the mirror match, one and only so. In Gil, usually, w when you're going to an event, usually you don't prep too much for Gil because low skill Gil players usually you can get around, but like the higher, like there's not really many Gil players that play in events. So you're just like, okay, hopefully I just dodge the Gils. But in the mirror match, like when I'm bringing a deck, even if I don't think a lot of other people are going to play it, I want to prep for the mirror. And one and only lets me do that. Because what I did was and i faced two gills in swiss i believe and each time i went judgment search out absolute get a blue stone past turn and they go do if they judgment after that then i'm just gonna go find one and only and cast one and only and kill both warrior rulers while yes that does set me back a little bit it also plays right into my game plan because I don't like variables in matchups, and having my opponent also have a gill can be a huge variable because it can become an outplay if I, if somehow you mess it up, and it could also lead to like depending on what they have in their deck, they might be able to get more spice off than you can. So that that was always my gameplay, and it worked every time. There was not a single time where my opponent went, "Okay, counter." And I was like, yeah, I just can't counter back. No, I, because, like, you always try to have a fair spell or, and or a vanish in hand to make sure you can stop it also. So, one and, one and only is a good sleeper, and I think people should be on the lookout for it in the future. Um, playing the Blackstone, I, uh, I play Ruin Story in my list. I feel like that card is really, really nice because I can kind of outgrind with my baby gills. If someone tries, if someone kills them or whatever, like say in the Lucifer matchup or in the mirror or whatever, if some somehow someone kills a baby gill, I can just ruin story to bring it back to my hand and then play it again. While there is a little bit of graveyard hate out in the format right now, people are kind of falling off of their gra graveyard hate because they don't think it's good enough. Um, and I value graveyards. I, I value my grave doing things on my graveyard a lot, and so when people do that. I'm just like, okay, well, I'm going to capitalize and play on my graveyard again. So, and like, Evil Amount of Uprising usually isn't that good against Gil because Gil will just remove a, uh, remove an elemental with himself. But like, if you can hit Lore or, uh, Baby Gil out of an Uprising, I call that a win because that hurts Gil more than you would imagine. So, um, and so why do I think the blue list, the blue black list is better than the mono black list? So, Here's where you get into the two colors things I was talking about earlier. Um, the black green list is good, and while I like how it plays, it doesn't have the options that the blue list has. That one's a more straightforward, you're looking to get baby gill, you're looking to judgment, and you're just looking to out grind your opponent that way, while you still let your opponent have their gill. And I don't like that. And like also the black, it relies on, I would say it mostly relies on Ruin Story or like Black Tears or, I mean if they're playing Look of Corruption like Aaron is doing, that's basically what that deck's trying to do and it's not being, I feel like, I feel like this deck's more reactive and that deck's more proactive and I think a more reactive Gil is a better Gil in my opinion because Gil is a control deck. Um, uh, so that, I just feel like the blue-black list is a little bit more suited for this meta. Um, another card I do want to talk about, uh, in this video is Winds of Salvation. That card is bonkers. It, it helps against Karura, and it helps against Missile Team. 
Mistletine is a problem with Guild because they have that one stone that just says, oh, this human can't be countered if you have a Valkyrie. So they play that, and your out to it is Winds of Salvation. And with uh, spinning Aquasil on the deck, you can spinning Aquasil back Winds of Salvation and counter another one. Uh, it's, so it just makes your Brunhild matchup a little bit nicer. And I do think Brunhild is the hardest matchup for Gil. Um, I, th I do think that Brunhild is the hardest. Machines is probably the next hardest. Machines is a not fun deck to play against with Gil. Gil can get there, but really what it, what solidifies it is the second mystery box. If your opponent can get a second mystery box off, then the game is just about solidified there. Um, if I were to change this deck, if I were to go back and change this deck at all, I think I would put one Black Tears in main instead of having two in sideboard, because Black Tears really, really helps against that deck. I just wasn't, I wasn't thinking about machines, and the one machines player, of course, was Ryan Miles, but uh, I do, I do see machines going, being played more in the future, so I would expect people to run Black Tears in main. I, I think that's what people should be doing in Guild. Yeah, but um, so also for the Kyrick matchup, uh, Kyrick versus Gil is one of those matchups that's been around for a while, and people really haven't been able to fi like people think they figure it out, then go back the other way, and it's kind of a weird matchup with her tournament main that can really swing game one for Kyrick. But if Gil is sideboarding destruction in the portal, then the matchup basically goes back to how it used to usually is, where Gil can beat Kyrick pretty easily. Uh, basically, it's all about when Gil flips. If Gil flips and can survive, the game is just about over. But if Gil flips and dies, then Kyrick just about wins. So, Arrival of the Hero and Fifth Element do a lot for that matchup. Lorite also helps that matchup. Uh, White Leaf will gain you a ton of life if you can see him. Um, and then, like, after side, you have Last Days, which is really, really, really nice for that matchup. Uh, let's talk about Gil's problem, though, before we before we end, let's just talk about Gil's major problem I've been seeing. He is inconsistent. His elementals, most games, if you know how to play Gil really well, most games you'll win as long as you can see, like, a Leaf Paladin or, like, enough General Breeze to see fine elementals milling white leaves or something. You have to see your elementals. And that is the biggest problem I saw the whole weekend with Gil, is when you don't see your elementals. So, that is something to look out for with Gil when playing him. Uh, just be aware of that fact, because it can be a problem. Especially because Gil's go over 40 cards. It also kind of hurts the consistency too, but Gil kind of needs to go over 40 cards to fit its text. So I ran a 44 card list, uh, Aaron I think ran 46 cards, uh, the amount of cards you play in the deck is completely up to you, but you gotta make sure you know about the inconsistencies and make sure you can get there. Uh, I think one of the main reasons Aaron was able to get there with 46 cards was he was playing two Spiritual Guidance, which I would play going in, going later. If I were to play this deck again, I would, I would play Spiritual Guidance, that card is very very good. Uh, I just didn't like it because in my deck I was trying to be more tempo, kill my opponent faster, and not play around with the deck. But going further, I think like one or like two spiritual guidance is really good in this deck because you can also just um, spinning Alcaso it back to hand and play it again. So, uh, but yeah, uh, I think going forward with machines being. With Machines being in top 8 with Ryan and the cat kind of out of the bag that Machines are really good against Gil. I wouldn't really recommend playing Gil that much uh, in many unless you can really solidify that matchup and your Brunhild matchup at the same time. So, because Gil has a good matchup against Lucifer and Kirk and Hanzo and most other things, but those two matchups can be a problem. So if you are going to play Gil, one, I think you need to have practiced it a ton and know the matchups really, really well and be able to play extremely fast so that way you don't go to time and you know when to scoop to go to the next game. So again, you don't go into time. And um, just be just be notice, notable about the meta. Know, ex, know as much as you can about it going forward and 
you know, practice and practice. That's all you can really do with Gil. But I do feel like he is one of the, if not strongest decks in the format. But the skill cap is really high. And that's why you see, like, top players will top with Gil. And, you know, it's just a lot of power in one little deck. So, thank you guys for watching. I uh, hope that this has been a help to any of you. And, uh, yeah, can't wait to see several of you guys in mini. And, uh, yeah, this has been Will Luger's Rogues Guild, and we'll see you later. Peace.